Hey guys, Donald from St. Paul's Kids here. Now I'm gonna tell you guys a story today about one of my favorite people in the Bible, a guy called Joshua. Now Joshua, he was born as a slave in Egypt. And in that time, he saw Moses come onto the scene and he was a young man when they all walked through the Red Sea, looking at the sea, seeing the whales, the dolphins, probably even a shark or two. Big smiles looking there going, oh. but if there's anything like me, I would be probably be going as I'm walking on dry ground through the sea going, oh my gosh. Putting my hand in the water as the, oh, there's a shark. Walking through, he was there when he, they turned around and they saw the Pharaoh's army charging in the chariots racing towards them and he would have been around everyone going oh let's get ready guys this is gonna go bad and then he sort of watched Moses with his staff lower it down and the water <laughs> wipe out the Egyptian army now his story carried on because when Moses took the people of Israel to the promised land he sent out 12 spies and Joshua was one of them now, they explored and they saw these things. They saw the people, they saw the crops. Joshua brought back a grape bunch of grapes. That had, each grape was like the size of a football. Huge grapes. It took two people just to carry the bunch of grapes. And so they were all lined up, all the 12 people that went in to scout out the land, the spies. And Moses said, tell us what you saw, guys. Joshua was just about to say, this place is paradise. And then one of the others stepped forward, guys, I saw giants, huge, they had sharp pointy spears, it was scary. Another one stepped forward, the walls in their city, guys, they're huge, they're, what are we going to do? And one by one, ten of the other spies were like, this place is scary, there's no way we can do it. Joshua looked back at the other guy, Caleb, who was there, and they were like, what? And Joshua called out, guys, chill out, seriously, these are the grapes. Had, do you not remember what just happened to us? We walked through the Red Sea. I'm kind of thinking if God brought us from there to here, he can kind of take us to there. Seriously, let's do it. And Caleb was like, we can do this, guys, come on. And all the people went, oh, I don't know, oh, and, mate, and, and people started to even say, well, maybe we could go back and ask it. You know, we had a kind of good gig where we had a room. We were saying, no one tried to kill us. Um, maybe we could go in and over there back to Egypt. And because of the unbelief, the people of Israel were not allowed to enter the promised land for 40 years. Now Moses, he was a smart person. He knew that the next person to take over leading the country would need to be someone who was faithful, who was courageous. And he chose Joshua to be his number two. So he trained him up all through the wilderness when they walked and they camped and the battles that they had to face. He learned Josh, everything about Moses, including how to win battles on your knees, talking to God, which was the most important thing that Moses showed Joshua, how to have faith. Now eventually, what happened is Moses died. And Joshua knew it was the time for him to step up. So he started off knowing fully well that people were waiting for him to declare what was going to happen. Were they going to carry on the camp? What were they going to do? Moses was the last person that said that they wouldn't go in. He was taken up to heaven. Maybe this is this it? Do we sort of go back? Or do we find somewhere? Maybe make a little bit of a village? Joshua knelt down on his knees. He said, God, help me. I'm about to, I've got big shoes to fill. Leading country from Moses. And he heard God say to him, do not be scared, do not be terrified, have courage, for I will be with you wherever you go. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I hear God say something to me, 
that is special. And to be here to say that, I think I'm thinking he was pretty keen to carry on. So he rose up and he stood up and he told everybody, he said, everybody, get ready. You've got three days because we're going to the promised land. Now Joshua was smart. He learned from Moses' mistakes of sending out the 12 tribes. He sent a couple of spies out, just a scope out of target that he had in mind. He sent them to the biggest the meanest city in the land that was not too far from their location, a place called Jericho. And he sent them in and they found this lady who was looking at, happy to house them and she hid them when they came looking for them because word spread these Israelites had come into the city. And so the soldiers were looking for them everywhere. Where have you seen them? No, no, no I haven't. And they made a d deal with her that the, she would look after them, spare them and hide them. And sh they would then make sure she was safe with her family when the Israelites came to take over the city. After a day or two, they escaped and got back to Joshua and they said, Guys, what were we thinking? They're so scared of us. They've been worried about us for 40 years, guys. 40 years. They've been sitting there in their homes going, It's the day, the day the Israelites come and they're in the biggest, meanest city. They're packing themselves. Let's do this. Everyone started thinking, ready? Wow, could, could this actually happen? Wow. And Joshua stood there and said, all right, guys, let's go. And so they had one more miracle that happened before they got to Jericho. They needed to cross the Jordan River, which was in flood. How do you get a creep? Now, we're not talking about a little stream in New Zealand where you're going, oh, I got my knees wet. Oh, 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 oh. Hop on the rock. This was... It's not a big, huge river, but it's sort of the width, maybe two roads, but it's so deep and muddy that crossing it would, is really impossible in flood. It's just like they'll be swept away. The priests were told by Joshua to take the Ark of the Covenant, which is this big box that was pretty and housed all the Ten Commandments in it. They're walking down. And the first priest, there's a little bit of a slippery bank and he's about to put his foot in and he's like, the now and never, and his toe touched the water. And then it just went, whoop, it dried up. So they're walking through, standing in the middle of the Jericho River, which is dry. The whole people of Israel, <laughs> marching through, hey, Barry, hey, Jim, hey, don't get I'm good, I'm good, this is heavy, hurry up. They all got to the other side. And Joshua wasn't finished. He took one person from every tribe and he said, grab a big boulder from in that river. So they walked down and <laughs> came up and they made a big stack of stones to remind people. So that way, when they, when you're walking past the statue, kids would go, hey, what's that big statue, Dad? Well, son, that's the statue when one day when Joshua pulled all the people from Israel and God dried up the river so we could get here. Pretty good cool, way. Eh? Wow. That was what Joshua was thinking. Then he took the people to the biggest, meanest city in the land, Jericho. Now at Jericho, the walls went just like a garden fence, you know, two meters, not even four meters. The Bible described them as insurmountable, huge, the biggest, meanest city in the land. And the army was ready, right? General's like, okay, Joshua, what's the plan? Joshua asked God, and God gave him a plan. And I think Joshua had to ask him to give it to him again, because I, I kind of think I'd be like, huh? he said, right guys, get around. Here's the plan. For seven days, we're gonna march around this city with the whole army seven times. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah okay, yeah, yeah, no, oh, yeah, that'll be great for day one. We'll do it again, day two. Day three, day four, day five, day six, and day seven. And they're like, huh? But how are we going to get in? Just said, simple. God said, on the seventh day, we're all going to let out a mighty cheer. And everyone who hears that trumpet's going to go, blow it. And we're going to get in. The general sort of been like, oh. Uh, sorry? A couple of people thought, geez, this is not a plan from Moses where they come up with. 
but that's what happened and you can imagine standing as a soldier around Jericho looking down seeing these these people marching around singing songs like the joy of the Lord is my strength the joy of the Lord is my strength for seven days seven times each day by the end they're like we were scared of these guys are you kidding me look at them that guy can't even sing like Benny can't even fight and then on the seventh day the signal went out everyone was prepared for something just they had to let out a big chair and get ready so sure enough after the seventh time everyone went the people the guards in the jericho stadium were saying oh they're making noise what the walls around the city collapsed the soldiers were standing there going, uh, well that happened. The generals drew their spears and their swords and said, Judge! And they came and, and took over the city. Well, you can imagine what happened. Everyone who was scared of Israel for 40 years was now petrified of them. All the Hebrew people had come in to God's promised land and they had many more battles and Joshua had to sort out many other issues. Some they lost, but God was always with them. And it got to a point at the end, towards Joshua had pretty much conquered most of the area that they were. And he got everyone together and he knew that the people were likely to make mistakes. And there were other people were coming in and telling them about their gods in the land and there all these other fake gods. And some people even brought gods from Egypt and started talking to them. Well, Joshua gathered everybody and he came up and he said, Guys, listen to me now. We have a choice. God has put us in this promised land. You could hear the crowd. Everyone quiet thinking, what's he going to say? And he said, I know there have been people who have made bad choices. And in my time of leading this country, there are people that have caused pain because of it. The choices that they made haven't been good. They've followed the wrong gods and we've all had to pay the, the consequences of that. But today I say to you, choose this day whom you will serve, the God who took us out of Egypt and brought us to this promised land, this land of Coke and chocolate, or these fake false gods where you get to stand and look at a statue and go, look at the statue, oh, it just broke. But the one true living God is with us. So choose this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord forever. Silence filled the people. And then almost on mass, they let out a mighty chip. Yeah! We're in Joshua! Yeah, we're there now! We're gonna follow God! We're gonna, like your family, we are gonna follow God! And they did, for a time. But they made many mistakes along the way. But Joshua's verse in Joshua 1.9 ran through, through through all of Joshua's life. Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. But I will be with you wherever you go. And guys, that is the story for this week. We'll see you later.